Shalom and welcome. This is Apostle Hal Goy at Destiny Apostolic Christos Center and Destiny Transformation Glory Fellowship. I welcome you to this brief introduction to our discipleship program. If you are watching me right now, it's because you are either curious or interested in our discipleship program. Discipleship is the apostolic mandate. Many uh, refer to it as the Great Commission. Our Lord Jesus Christ commissioned, mandated, sent and charged the early apostles to go out and make disciples of all the nations and all the people, every race, every tongue, every tribe, every nation, to be disciples. And so this same mandate is upon us. A Destiny Apostolic Christos Center and Destiny Transformation Glory Fellowship and at the Destiny Apostolic Academy of Life, our main focus is discipleship making. The purpose of, disip the purpose of discipleship is maturity, spiritual maturity. The people of God growing to the fullness of the heavenly life, to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. This is what it's all about. This is what discipleship is all about. Maturity comes through change, growth, and growth and change come through transformation. And transformation must encompass the whole being. Just like the scriptures tell us, Apostle Paul writing to the Thessalonica church, that God wants you to prosper body, soul, and spirit. God is interested in the full person growing to that level of maturity. And prosperity here is not just about money or physical health. It is the fullness of the life of God filling us in our bodies, transforming our bodies. Hallelujah. Bringing divine life to every member, every organ of our bodies and to our souls, healing our emotions and, 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 and giving us a new expression, releasing the, a new expression of the heart of God, the thought of God, the mind of God what God says, hallelujah, and then the spirit. So the next revival that is coming is going to be a soul revival where the soul of man is going to catch fire with the life of heaven. In the book of Matthew chapter 14 and Mark chapter 17, we see how our Lord Jesus Christ handled this process. When people come to church, to most of the churches today, the focus is on the numbers, the head counts, how many are we? It's what is visible. But our Lord Jesus Christ wasn't concerned about that. His focus was the fullness of the measure of his stature in man. And so the story here is about a young rich man comes to, to church, He's young, he's rich, probably good-looking, influential, and, and he, has, he got connections, you know. He comes to church, and he expresses the desire to follow the Lord. And in many churches today, he would be welcome, given a nice, comfortable place to sit, treated well, given much attention, but the Lord didn't do any of that. He confronted the man up from the de from the door he confronted the man he saw the issues of this man he saw the hindrances he saw what would become an obstacle to him and he confronted him in those areas go sell all your money all your goods and then take all your money give it to the poor don't even give bring me an offering just give everything to the poor you see, this would not be the approach for many of us. Many, our tendency for many of us would be, you know, people just coming in, just, you know, give them some prophetic word, you know, what God wants to do for them, how God wants to open finances for them, and, 
and give them, you know, husband or, or wife or a new job or a new car. And, and, and then we begin catering to the very things that would become an obstacle to the development and the growth of this person. And so we maintain them at the baby, spiritual baby level. And so we have too many immature people in the church because of the way we bring them in. Well, for many preachers, you know, this is a benefit because in the end, you know, they're the only ones hearing the voice of God. They're the only one prophesying on you, on your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your cat, your dog, your job, the police, the government. And so people keep coming, but our Lord Jesus Christ had a different approach. He explains this further in the book of Luke chapter 14. He says, each one of you, when you want to build a house, see life is a house you are the house of god i am the house of god and together we are a spiritual house god is building us and so he says before you build the house evaluate the course and compare with your resources and abilities this is very very interesting before you can follow Jesus, our Lord, even today, he says, check yourself. Do you have what it takes to follow me? Don't think that you can just come and follow me just like that. It will cost you. And he gave the young man the cost up front. See, we are the house of God. And he challenges us today. He says, before you can follow Jesus, you need to be aware of the cost. This is not exactly as we welcome people into the house of God these days to the Lord. We must give them the cost up front. We need to have discernment and sit down with them and show people exactly what it will cost them. In, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, he says it very clearly. If you want to follow the Lord, you must carry your cross, die to self daily. So he tells us these things from the, right from the beginning. He is not trying to ease you in and then later on you're going to find out. And, and so we have people going through the same cycles and the same cycles and getting comfortable in the flesh and, and, and the, full, the church full of the flesh and immature people. Our mandate is to raise people to maturity. And the truth is time is running out. We should be in the redeeming the time mode right now. We must speak the truth in love to the people. And show them this is what it will cost to build this house for the Lord you are being built as a house of God and this is what it will have to cost you these are the things you have to give up take it or leave that's what he did with the rich young man the rich young man left did you notice that the Lord didn't follow him he stayed where he was you come to him as leaders, we need to stay where the Lord is. We must not follow people where they are. I was talking to a friend of mine and he was explaining to me how, as a leader, in order to win some categories of people, he needs to dress like them or she needs to dress like them and identify with them. No, 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 no. That's not what the Lord did. He stays here. And he compels you and challenges you to come to where he is. We cannot try to dress like them, talk like them, act like them, behave like them, and expect them to follow us. The truth is, we have just followed them. And they will expect us to keep following them. 
much of the church is actually following the world today. Going after the world. Why? Because we have measured success in ministry in a worldly way that appeals to the flesh. But the Lord gives another example in the book of Luke, the same chapter 14 in the book of Luke. He said, if you are a king and you want to go to war against another king, you have 10,000 troops and the other king has 20,000 troops. Why don't you save everybody's lives? Send an embassy. Make peace with that king. Now don't get mixed up here. He's not saying that you should go and make peace with the devil. He's not saying that you should capitulate to the devil because maybe in your eyes the devil looks like he got 20,000 troops and you got only 10,000. What he says is this spiritual walk of following our Lord Jesus Christ is a war. And you need to evaluate, actually. And you are either going to make peace with the adversary and stay there, or you're going to come and join the army of overcomers, of winners. You're going to become a part, an integral part of a body. You see, this is not something that you can do necessarily but on your own. We are a body and we fight together for each other. When one area of your body is sick, the rest of your body engages in warfare to bring healing to that part of the body. This is the way the body of Christ should function. So rather than criticize each other and shoot the wounded soldier in our midst, we should be fighting for one another. And he says, this is what it takes to follow the Lord. To become his follower. To become his disciple. A lot of people come to this ministry. And I have to be very, very clear. This is the cost. Denying yourself. Many people come with different motives. And I've made this very, very clear over and over and over in this ministry. I only have one thing to give. And it's Christ, the heavenly life. Nothing else. Nothing else. And people come with different motives and different agendas. And such people don't stay. They fall away. They get disappointed because they didn't get what they were looking for. Beloved, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And be honest and sincere, totally, wholeheartedly. Then God will provide everything else in his own time. You see, wanting God must be our top priority. To want God in our lives. Not what God can give. You see, God is love. We ask him for love. No, we ask him for himself then he becomes love in us and then we become love that's his nature god is my strength i'm not asking me him to make me strong i want him and then he becomes in me my strength then i have nothing to boast this is what it means to be a vessel beloved god is not going to allow an immature bride to sit on his throne with his son. And discipleship program, our discipleship program, our aim, our goal is your full maturity. And so we have to identify those areas in your life that we need to deal with, all those things that would become hindrances and, 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 and encumbrances and, and, and obstacles and stumbling blocks in our lives. We have to be able to teach 
point these things to people, there is a price to be paid. Unfortunately today, most people want to hold to those things that are dear to their flesh and also want the Lord. God will never give himself fully to a people that don't give themselves wholeheartedly unto him, that would not seek him fully, that would not want him to be fully Lord and King and rule and enthrone himself in us individually, in us collectively, corporately. God will never give himself fully to such a people. He demands wholeheartedness, total surrender. Beloved, as you come, if you are interested to join us in our discipleship program, beloved, Luke chapter 4, that's our, our, our operation. Luke chapter 4, you know, shine the light to those who sit in darkness, heal the brokenhearted break the chains, set free those who are taken in, into captivity, deliverance, healing deliverance, restoration. We're not trying, seeking to control people. Over here what we do is to release you into freedom, into God, so that you may fulfill your destiny fully. And so you have to make some commitments to this program. I am fully committed to you. You have to make some commitments to God and to this program. You have to come with humility and honesty and at least the willingness to be humble, to submit to the program, to allow us to rebuke you, to correct you, to direct you as necessary in love. You must be willing to be transparent and because we honor each other here, and within the culture of honor, you can be transparent and open. You must be willing to be available, to be a part, an integral part of the body, to be available when, when you are needed, to also become a support to others just as others are support to you. You must be willing to support this ministry. There is a difference between supporting me. Some people come here and they want to help me as an individual. But they don't understand the need to support the ministry. Being a disciple requires you to be available to the limits of your resources to support the work of God. You have to be willing to stay the course through the healing process. There will be ups and downs. It's not going to happen overnight. But at least it is required that you make certain commitments to this program. Our discipleship program uh, it, it is an ongoing process. We work with you closely. Our goal is to see conformity to the image of Christ in you to take you to the level of sonship, where God releases the full authority and power of his government, of the government of his kingdom unto you. You see, the prodigal son came and he wanted to do things for, God, for the father. Many of us want to do things for the father. The father wants to make you into a vessel so that he may move in you and through you to be able to do what he wants. You get rewarded by God only for what you have allowed him to do in and through you and by you as a vessel, not for what you can do for him with your own abilities. The father didn't listen to the son. He said, put a robe on him, put a ring in his finger, and let him sit at the table with me as a son. Sonship requires discipleship. God wants to operate with his sons in this hour. That includes the ladies. It's not gender-based. If you have any more questions about our discipleship program, please contact me. If you're watching us on our website, go to the menu at the top, 
go to contact us page and send me a private message. You may also call me directly. The phone number is listed. And if you're watching us on any of our social media platforms, you can contact me directly on that platform. I welcome all of you who would join us into this discipleship program. May God bless you. I love you. Shalom.